Do you think Juneteenth is a useless holiday? I basically do. Single day voting on election day. We will make election day a holiday in the United States of America, so there's no complaints about it. Cancel Juneteenth or one of the other useless ones we made up. Okay? I don't, we can't have like everything be a holiday, but we'll cancel one of the other ones and make, make election day a holiday. Paper ballots and government issued voter ID that matches the voter file. That is what we will do. Going back to your election security uh, plan, you said you wanted to have a holiday. You said uh, maybe cancel Juneteenth or one of those other useless holidays. Do you think Juneteenth is a useless holiday? I basically do. Yeah. Do you think uh, Memorial, uh, Memorial Day, Veterans Day are useless holidays? I don't, because I have, I have I stand with the presumption of time-tested traditions. Like, like I said, religion is, you know, I call these things cults. I won't dignify them as religious because religions have withstood the test of time. And so I think that if we made a national commemorative holiday for everything that's important and happened in our history, we'd have no working days left. But I think that the spirit of Juneteenth, we already channel into other holidays like Martin Luther King Day, like President's Day. I think we can commemorate the spirit of that holiday separately. So I think that we shouldn't have redundant holidays that celebrate overlapping purposes. It should have a distinct purpose. And I think, let's be honest, the reason for making that a holiday was under political duress. It's a political hostage situation on the back of the death of George Floyd. And I think that that should not be how we create holidays. We should not create holidays with a cultural gun to our head. And that's what happened. Okay, so y'all just heard that right, that nonsense right there out of the mouth of ramen noodles. And for those of y'all who have not heard that, that and it's your first time, I understand if it makes you want to vomit. And for those of y'all who have heard it and probably wondering, was I going to talk about it? You damn right I was going to talk about it. Especially considering I talked about this concerning Candace Owens. Vivek Ramaswamy and Charlie Kirk back in June when all three of them and probably some others, but those three stuck out, stuck out like a sore thumb to me the most when it came to their issues involving Juneteenth. You know, Candace said what she said. She went on a whole tirade about it. Then Charlie um, Vivek said what he said about it. And then Charlie Kirk said what he said about it. Now, fast forward to recently, and I believe this was in one of his more recent campaign trails, by the way, I'm recording this on August 7th, 2023, where he was asked a simple question, should they cancel Juneteenth? And he flat out says yes. Now, if you heard in the beginning of the video, that was like an excerpt of what he went on further saying in the last part. Then when he, he's in front of the crowd of people again, Whenever Vivek talks to people about black people, there's never any black people around. And this situation right here that you just heard is no different. It was nothing, nobody in that room, but a bunch of PC individuals, men and women. That was it. Like you look out, look in that room and that's all you saw. The most black you probably saw in that room was maybe on an article of clothing in his hair and his eyebrows. And, or something to that effect or some text that's it but as far as a black body there were there, there weren't any there and notice how enthused many of them got when he was saying that they need to cancel useless holidays like juneteenth their applause got louder now keep this also in mind he said that they should let or make election day be a national holiday and the holiday that he wants to sacrifice is Juneteenth and I keep sitting here saying to myself Juneteenth has always been a holiday it didn't become federalized until two years ago but it's always been a holiday that was celebrated by a certain sector of people like certain holidays are not every holiday that's on a calendar or anything that's not federalized is going to be celebrated by everyone some things are just culture based. Juneteenth is culture based, but then they federalized this so everyone can get in on the marketing ploy of it all or the the money making the monetary gain of it all. That's really what it is. So he sits there and he says 
that they need to cancel Juneteenth because it's a useless holiday, make Election Day a federal holiday, which, by the way, some states, while Election Day is not a federal holiday, there are some states that do acknowledge it as a holiday, which is why some states will allow people to take off that day to go vote. Some like especially like yeah, some jobs will allow you to do that. I think some federal government jobs will allow you to take off that day to go vote. But it's not a federal holiday where everything is closed. But he says he wants to make election day a federal holiday, mind you. When you're thinking of election day, so you're talking about something that on a state level is every two years and something on a national level is every four years. So just keep that in mind. He goes on to say how Juneteenth is when it was like when the interview was asking him, like, well, why don't you like, do you think that Memorial Day? I think he said Memorial Day and I think he said Veterans Day. I think he asked him, were those considered useless? And he flat out says no. And I knew he was going to say no before he even said it. Because remember, Memorial Day is not Memorial and Veterans Day is seen as, quote unquote, patriotic. And when we say when they say the words patriotic, that means white. OK, a couple years ago, I don't really use the term that, like that much anymore. A lot of people are used to me saying PC more than anything. But before I started saying PC, I was using the term fake treat. So, yes, for those of y'all who weren't around, then I used the term fake trees to acknowledge how a lot of PC individuals will claim they're all American. They bleed red, white and blue. They stand for the national anthem, some of them and all this and that and the third. But I bet you that when you ask them was the last time they went to the VA to go talk to the vets, they couldn't tell you when's the last time you went to go lay some roses down at the Arlington Cemetery if you live near it. When's the last time you've gone to a base? Why are there so many homeless veterans? They couldn't even answer that question or do any of the things I just said, but they're so all American. Just because they stand for the national anthem or stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, that does not make you a patriot. It is what it is. But he said that he would not get rid of those in so many words. He gave some babble, but really it's because they're the all American traditional holiday. I'm surprised. I wish the interview would have asked him about the fourth because I know he would have flat out said, <laughs> you know, he would have said, no, we got it. You know, we got to keep that. You know, it's all this and the third. And then, of course, when he comes back and he talks about uh, Juneteenth, he says that he says Juneteenth, it should be a holiday that it basically encompasses all. So basically what he's saying is because Juneteenth is a culture holiday that is acknowledging foundational black Americans, it's seen as divisive. You know, white people and their co-colonizing cohorts like Vivek Ramaswamy, a.k.a. ramen noodles, love to use that word divisive a lot when it comes to black people in anything that we do what more so black americans they they love to use that word divisive and it's like a it's a dog whistle word and it's a trigger word as well it's a dog whistle to these outsiders that says that oh black people you need to stay away from them because they are divisive they're ruining the nation and all this that and the third it's a dog whistle to them as well basically trying to say well don't you, you you're not going to want to go around them because, you know, they're not going to allow you to be in their inner sanctum or in their circles because they're just trying to do for self. Isn't that what everyone else is doing? It's the same thing that they do, even when it comes down to reparations. They say it's so divisive. Then, of course, he throws in Martin Luther King. Day. I, 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 he's so predictable. I'm not surprised by anything that he said. You should have saw the way my face looked. As the audio was playing on the other side of this microphone that I'm talking into right now. He's so predictable. It's not even funny. Because he uses the same talking points that all these other groups of people use. And that is steeped in anti-blackness. But I think one of the biggest 
forms a different biggest disrespectful thing that he probably said in here even though the whole thing was disrespectful was when he said that juneteenth was created on the back of the death of george floyd i feel like i heard that somewhere else where someone else said that too i think it might have been charlie kirk he said that juneteenth was created as a holiday on the back of the death of george floyd even though juneteenth has again been a holiday mainly celebrated by black americans in texas since the 1800s which is decades and i, I do mean decades probably over most likely over a century before george floyd was even born and well well before vivek was even born so how is it that juneteenth a holiday or a day of celebration that was celebrated by mainly black people especially in the state of texas celebrated since the 1800s how could that have been created on the back of the death of george floyd again they're misconstruing it and they do this on purpose see we know that juneteenth existed long before they made it a federal holiday they made it federal holiday in 2020, which by the way, I'm gonna say it right now, black people as a collective, we didn't ask for Juneteenth to be as a holiday. So if people think out there that we asked for Juneteenth to be a holiday, they are sadly mistaken. We liked it when it was considered an underground day, something that was just amongst us, because we, as you can see, what it has spiraled into. These talking points that Vivek and Candace and Charlie have spewed out there. Remember what Charlie Kirk has said in one of his, in that video that I did when I was talking about it in the live stream, he was saying that he felt like Juneteenth uh, was going to compete uh, with 4th of July or something to the effect of Juneteenth being celebrated for a whole week. And I had asked my audience, I said, how many days did y'all celebrate Juneteenth? Cause I only celebrated it one day and that was on that Sunday. No, that Monday, I forgot, because Sunday was Father's Day. And on that Monday, I didn't celebrate it beyond Monday. But meanwhile, when the fourth rolled around, and I was right about this, people was firing off fireworks on the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, pretty much all the way through the rest of the week. I bet Charlie Kirk had nothing to say about that. But when you look at when you listen to what Vivek said and what Charlie said in particular, Candace too, but more so the, the two, the first two I mentioned, their talking points are almost exactly the same. But why are we surprised? They're both anti-black to the core. So yeah, we see why he wants to quote unquote cancel Juneteenth. But I'm telling you right now this is going to he, he's ruining his own campaign like if i don't know why he thinks he has a snowball chance in hell at winning this presidency a lot of people I, I well not a lot of people i've seen a couple people say oh he's going to probably get vice president under whose administration is the question this man ain't gonna be nobody's damn vice president but then again, I can't say never say never because after all, Trump did become president himself. But I highly doubt Ramaswamy is going to become president or have any type of position in any cabinet that's coming up in 2024 should they actually win. That is. I'm telling you, it's a bunch of clowns. That's a big clown car right there where all of them are taking turns at the wheel. And that's a very dangerous thing. Let's just put it this way. I would not want to be on anybody's road if any of them were steering that vehicle. But yeah, I'm not surprised that Ramaswamy, Ramen Noodles, said what he said out of his mouth as it pertains to Juneteenth and him saying that we need to go ahead and cancel it and saying that it's a useless holiday. But the reasoning he gave of it being useless was even a bad faith argument, which I'm not surprised by that either. See. People like him, and I've told people like this before, he's so easily debunked. Myself, Kid Gravity, um, Black Light Revelations 2, and many others, 
have more than debunked this guy so many times that we are basically now just doing this for fun. I will not raise my blood pressure or damn they want to rip my hair out or lose a wink of sleep crying or whining or getting mad over anything that this dude says. I just do this because it's kind of therapeutic to, and it gets my, it gets my debunking skills up too. It also makes you want to do further research on whatever it is that they say. Like I said, ramen noodles and those of his ilk are so easy to debunk. I'm telling you, anyone who harbors anti-blackness are some of the easiest people to break down. As long as you know your history, you'll be good. Why do you think for those of y'all who are on Twitter when Tariq holds those spaces and them trolls be calling in to troll, how he's not going off on them. He's not cussing them out. He's very calm and composed and they don't like that because they are so used to seeing black people get loud and get mad and get out of our element. That's because they get an arousal out of that. And when you don't give them that energy, it makes them even more triggered. They can't stand a calm black person that will calmly tell them about themselves while also giving them a historical ass whooping. So that's how I look at it when it comes to what he just what Vivek Ramaswamy said as it pertains to Juneteenth and whatnot. Now, I would ask him this. How would he feel if someone said, oh, we need to cancel certain holidays surrounding around his culture? Granted, he even does celebrate him because um, uh, this man is so, quote unquote, ingrained into the American fabric. Remember, the interviewer asked him, well, do you think they should cancel uh, or no? Do you think that Memorial Day and Veterans Day are are useless holidays? And I like that the interviewer asked that because, again, those are the quote unquote patriotic days. To him and some of the others who are around him feels that Juneteenth is an un-American day. But that's the thing. That's the de- that's the whole deal. That three-fifths doctrine, that three compromise of saying black people are seen as three-fifths of a human being, they may not go around and actually say it like they used to, but this, that's how they feel. It was so funny watching them have meltdown after meltdown when they made Juneteenth a federal holiday. Granted, we didn't ask for it, but I thought it was just funny watching them lose their collective minds, assuming they had lot minds to lose to begin with. But yeah, I think I've already said enough. Y'all pretty much get the gist of it. Vivek Ramaswamy is a POS. I think he probably knows it, but he doesn't care. And I cannot wait for June 20. I'm sorry, June. August 23rd to roll around because I'm going to have I'm going to have my sights on him and Ron the Snowflake since they want to use some of the same anti-black talking but I mean granted everyone on that stage has anti-black talking but but those two right there are the ones we're going to be honing in on I cannot wait for when that day comes and it's coming very soon very fast <laughs>